Hey, this is Ralph. We are still working on our buckets retirement planner. Now in the last video, we made this really crazy if function. So what I need to do next is I need to make a lot of these cell references absolute so that I can copy that formula, that function all the way down. And in fact, every cell reference except the reference to F4, F4 contains the current age for that particular year. So every reference other than F4 needs to be absolute. So I'll just put my insertion point there, press F4 on my keyboard, and I'm gonna make all of these cell references except for the F4 references into absolute references. So a little tedious, but pretty easy to do. So work with me on this one. Do a quick glance here. F4 is the only relative cell reference. Coolio. Now that we've got that, I can autofill it down. There we go. And I do need to correct these ages. So Social Security income for me is until 67. Pension income is until 65, which means I'm going to have a pretty big draw requirement going forward. But then it goes to, actually, it looks like a negative there. I don't want that negative to take place. So let me tweak this a little bit. In front of my ifs function, I'm going to put a max. The max of, let's say, I'm always going to take out at least 12 grand. 12 grand comma or the ifs, and then I need a closing parentheses right there. Excellent, and I can auto fill this down. So I'm always taking out at least 12 grand from that bucket one. Of course, I need to take out more in the early years because it is before I can have access to some of that retirement money from the government or my uh, employer, school. Okay, now in doing this, I've, you know, things do look a little messy here. So let's see, my bucket one cash, instead of being based off of the net requirement, I'm gonna tweak that so that it's based off of my annual cost of living. And then bucket two, I think similarly, that's gonna be annual cost of living, but I don't need it to be that much. I'll just do something like 3.5. Okay, I think I'm satisfied with that for now. All right, feeling pretty good about this. Now, in altering this draw formula, I'm no longer affecting my inflation rate, or I'm no longer factoring in inflation, and I do wanna do that. So I think what I'll do is I'm gonna tweak my balanced growth formula, which was factoring in, see that C12? It's factoring in the 0.5% I expect to get from my money market uh, short-term savings account, checking account, that kind of thing. So I think what I'll do is I'm going to tweak this. So I'll do that C12. I put a parentheses in front of the C12 and I'm going to subtract B3 absolute closing parentheses there. So basically I'll be taking that 0.5% growth rate of the checking account, money market account, and I'll be subtracting the 2% inflation. Hence that's gonna be a negative 1.5% growth. So I'll be losing money that way. But I think that way I can still incorporate that inflation value and it'll give me a little sense of confidence if I see things are still gonna work out. Now let's zoom out for a moment here. And I think what's happening is I'm gonna be getting to a situation which I do wanna avoid. It's actually not too bad. Um, yeah, I don't wanna to make too many necessary draws from my bucket three that soon. And I see my bucket two balance is uh, very, very high. Let's make sure I'm factoring in everything properly. Let's see, C13, that should be an absolute reference. I wanna make sure I'm getting that at least 4% return growth there. Okay, so that might change a few things. But I also wanna change how my draws are calculated. So I'll just go ahead and edit this draw value here. If J13, I don't care about being less than B12, but if it is less than, let's say, my draw amount, because my draw amount is gonna change. So I'd rather base these needs from bucket two and bucket three off of the more accurate uh, draw amount. So uh, let's say H4 times 1.5. And if I need to draw, then I'm going to take H4 times 1.5, which will reduce the amount that I need to take or draw in those later years, although it is increasing that amount. I'm actually okay with that. And I want to do something similar with the draw for bucket three. 
instead of being worried about B13, which is my starting minimum, instead, I'm gonna base that off of the draw from bucket two times 2.5. And if I do need to get money, it's gonna be the draw amount from bucket two times 2.5 changing these factors in a little bit. And there's no hard science to this, by the way. I'm just looking at the numbers and I'm trying to get a situation that seems realistic, yet I don't want to get into a situation where I'm drawing too much too soon from bucket three, because your goal as much as possible is to protect that long-term bucket three growth account. And I think I like this. So oh, basically, in the scenario that I have here, um, I'm having to draw from my long-term growth account in the fourth year of retirement and the eighth year of retirement, but then I don't need it so much because then the, sim the small growth from bucket two plus my diminishing need for money because I'm relying more on government um, money and school money and things like that, looks like things are working out. I'm looking over my numbers and just trying to see, make sure none of the balances get too low compared to their purpose. And I feel pretty good about that. So once you get to this level, then you wanna start playing around with other numbers. And I can say, okay, well, um, what if I were to retire? Let's really screw this up a bit. What if I retired at age 50? Uh, which really means first year retirement at 51. And we can start to see, okay, that's a little bit more taxing on the system because I have to draw more money. So all the account balances don't seem to get in dire straits. It is gonna require more draws, but at least that's good to know. Now, also, what if my cost of living is more like 75,000? Okay, well, pretty soon I'll get to a point to where my retirement fund just can't sustain that particular cost of living and the early retirement because I'm getting some negative numbers over there. So that's what's great about these calculators is once you feel like you have a relatively accurate representation of what the future might be, start plugging in numbers and see what's reasonable or what's unreasonable for your situation. For me, Having a $75,000 a year need and retiring at age 50 based on 750 grand, it's just not gonna cut it for me. So I'm gonna have to work later and I'm gonna have to have reduced expenses in retirement and things like that. So work on your own calculator. And if you don't mind, if you create this for yourselves and you come across some interesting scenarios that you think make it more realistic for you and for others, let me know because I would like to tweak my own calculator a little bit more because we wanna have confidence on that year before retirement. Thanks for hanging out with me.